Tage. G'day everyone, Not Sealed here. Today we've got a project of cleaning our evaporative cooler, also known as a, uh, a swamp cooler. So we'll be showing you the steps involved in cleaning out this evaporative aircon and how you can do it cheaply yourself. It's a really easy do-it-yourself project. I, I do it every six months on my evaporative cooler and it really needs it. The amount of dirt, bugs and rubbish these evaporative aircons suck in is just ridiculous. So what we need to do first is remove the top corner clamps. There's two on each corner. And all you'll need is a, a screwdriver. You can pop them off with your fingers but it's it hurts a little bit so I'm a bit of a wimp so I use a screwdriver. As a qualified electrician I've got the right tools for the job. In fact all you'll need today is a screwdriver, a vacuum cleaner, a cordless one preferably, a hose, and a paintbrush. The larger the better, it just makes the job a lot easier. And maybe some cleaning products like a something like a Pinoclean or disinfectant. Any type of disinfectant or multi-purpose cleaner will do the job. We just want to get rid of any germs that could be present in the uh, breeze air unit. As you can see now, we're just removing the side panels. They're really easy. Just jam a screwdriver in the top, prise it out, and um, they pop right out. It's a really simple process. Anyone anyone can do this. Just bear in mind that the honeycomb cardboard linings are very fragile and, and they can crack and fall apart. So we want to try and keep these cooler pads intact. So I just stack them on top of each other gently and make sure they don't fall down and damage our neighbor's house, which is really, really close. Now we've got a couple of main parts here. We've got the main water cooler pump. It's called a tornado and it's a 230 volt pump. It just sucks the water up from the bottom, up through these tubes and comes out the top which drips onto the cooling pads. The white box at the top is the breeze air brains of the unit. It supplies the variable speed to the motor and the other components in this evaporative cooler. Now be sure to check all the hoses so they're not cracked or leaking. This water quality sensor detects how bad the water is and dumps it if it requires through the dump valve. They're pretty reliable, just sometimes scale builds up on the bottom of them. Now this is the water level float valve. It's a simple device that just keeps the water level constant due to evaporation. You can adjust the level just by adjusting that float up and down. Now this next device, the Breeze Air Dump Valve, it's a 24 volt AC unit. It closes to hold the water in the bottom of this Breeze Air cooler. It does open to dump it and closes when it needs. But it's I've, as an electrician I've replaced so many of them, they're absolutely junk. This is the direct drive drum motor. It's a dual fan drum drive which is very efficient. And this is the little flap valve that opens to let the air through into your home and closes when the fan's not running. Keeps vermin out of your house. So I start my service by just grabbing my paintbrush and just wiping down some of the dust and debris that's accumulated at the bottom of the cooler. We will be vacuuming this up, so I just make a few little piles here and there. I do not recommend pushing it down the dump valve. Even though it goes into the waste drain, um, it can block it up. You know, there's some big chunks in there, heavy duty chunks that will just give you a blockage in your pipe and then you're probably calling out a plumber and electrician. So yeah, just put make it a couple of piles and then vac it up. It's the easiest way to do it. A lot of this uh, build up is actually scale over time, uh, lime scale. So what, what I found at the end of the season, I just pour a little bit of um, descaler into my evaporative unit. Uh, it does help over time something like CLR clear and then just run the fan on a really low setting you know, for about half an hour because it, it does it does smell a little bit that will help um, get rid of all that scale and it just flushes it down the drain um, if you don't do it for a few years you get this real um, heavy build up everywhere um, th this unit has got a little bit we'll have to run some descaler through it later on or a wire brush also helps to to get rid of it now it is very important when you are working on your aircon that you do isolate the power, especially when you're working inside this fan like this, cleaning the blades. The blades do get a bit of dust build up on them as well, and each individual blade will need a 
bit of a brush down to keep, keep it in balance. It also gives us a chance to check each blade to make sure that they're not cracked or damaged, bent. They they are quite tough and rugged, but they can can bend over time and, and break if the build-up is too heavy or the fan gets out of balance. Now, being a two-drum drive, we'll also have to do the other side, check each fan blade and, and clean them just to make sure everything is sweet and in balance. The orange unit up here is a wireless receiver for the wireless controller that we have inside our house. Um, that's been pretty reliable. So we'll just walk around the other side here and show you this drum drive. This white motor in the middle spins both drums and we have to give them a clean again just to keep the fan blades into balance and check each one. It's time consuming but it has to be done. While we're spinning the um, drum, we can also check if the bearings are good or if there's any play in the drive motor. Once everything's been wiped down and brushed down, we can get out the vac. This is a Dyson V7, just with a brush head attachment, and it's perfect to suck up any of the old scale that we've brushed down. I have the um, Dyson set on high speed or boost speed. It won't last as long, gives me about I don't know, six or seven minutes run time, but it's enough to grab what I need. Um, it's extra high power, so it pulls up everything really, really quickly. I do recommend staying away from water. The Dyson cordless does not do well sucking up water. It'd probably blow it up. Once I've finished sucking up all the dirt, I like to grab the hose out and just, just give everything a bit of a rinse down. This gets rid of any other stubborn dirt that still may be hanging around and we'll flush all this smaller particles just down the open drain pipe here. If you're really motivated, you can actually even take these pads down to the ground level and give them a good flush out. You could also flush them inside the cooler once you've replaced them and give them a bit of a hose out from the outside just please please be very careful as you're washing down the um, air conditioner I find that the overspray gets onto the tile or metal roof this can be a, a very slippery hazardous exercise that could call you to slip and fall off the roof it's probably wise to wear a harness at working at heights and it's also a good idea to wear fully enclosed shoes with good grip the, the last thing we need for you to do is fall off the roof due to slippery shoes. Thongs are the worst idea, barefoot, no good. Once you've got it all hosed out, I used to like a bit of Pino Clean or disinfectant, give it a bit of a spray through. This will help kill any bugs that are in the system, help deodorize it a little bit, gives it a nice smell throughout the house. When you run it for the first time, you don't get that real musky, stale smell that you can get for the first time you start your evaporative cooler after after a few months. Now as we mentioned earlier the scale build up is, is a little bit significant here so what we can do is scrape it off or use some CLR clear as, as a spray or in the solution and run the aircon. The flushing water is starting to look really really good now so we could probably stop the hose and drain the water and replace the panels. So that's the basics covered in servicing your swamp cooler or evaporative air conditioner. Um, let's go into a bit of troubleshooting. I'll put some links in the description to cover the more technical aspects, but I just wanted to list some of the more common faults you have with these units. One is the uh, Tornado water pump. These, these can rattle loose out of their mounts, so just make sure that they're solid and that there are no debris stuck in the um, filter down below. Over time they will burn out as well, they might, might last 5 to 10 years. Now these shutoff valves or drain valves made will fit a Breeze Air, Bramer or a Sealy unit. They have just caused me no end of trouble. I replace a lot of them as electricians, they fail really easy. There's an internal motor inside and a couple of limits. The little plunger down below, the, the gasket seal seems to get hard and the motor struggles to, to make a good seal to make the limit. If it doesn't make the limit, it'll try a couple of times and if it doesn't reach it, the evaporative cooler will just shut down. It's a safety feature to stop wasting water. Now this is the main incoming tap isolating valve and up in here is 24 volt solenoid valve. It turns on and turns off depending uh, what the evaporative unit asks for. 
it's also um, if it has any problems or faults it will emergency shut down that valve it can leak over time and what you'll need to do is just replace the valve they're pretty reliable you might give you 10 years plus service out of it before it needs to be replaced now directly after the electronic valve is our float ball valve so this just uses a little pendulum mechanism with a little diaphragm or rubber gasket that will stop the flow as the float goes up just pull off that blue cover and you'll be able to replace the uh, rubber seal just be sure to test every operation that you do to make sure that it works as intended now we'll give our evaporative cooler one more flush through uh, just to get rid of some of that detergent Pine clean that we sprayed around the place as you can see it foams up pretty excessively if you have too much in there you will get foam just pouring out of your evaporative cooler it's it's pretty funny driving around the street sometimes and you can see someone's been working on their evaporative cooler and it's just pouring out foam they've forgot to do a flush through so now we'll just look at replacing our evaporative cooler cooler pads they just slot back in make sure they all fit in the grooves nicely and it's all even make sure you haven't left any tools inside the cooler you know I've gone to a few places and repaired people's coolers before and the last electrician has left his pliers or screwdriver inside and it's all nice and rusty one more thing to mention is you can also get scale build up on the outside of, and the inside of these uh, filter pads a good spray down with um, an anti-scale solution like CLR clear will, will work well and you've just got to hose it out afterwards every swamp cooler will have a different mounting mechanism be it clips clamps screws plugs but it's all very much similar you just undo the screws or plugs each covers will come back on just put them all back on reverse and you should have no more troubles Now just be careful as we're packing up, there's a lot of water around, it's slippery, it's wet and we want to be able to get down safely and in one piece. If you have any questions on your evaporative cooler, let me know in the comments below and, and if you found my content helpful, please give us a like and a subscribe. See ya!